Hello and welcome to episode 15 of VGN Weekly for September 24th, 2024. As always, we will recap this week's Virtual Grip Network race broadcast and bring you in-depth interviews with your favorite drivers, league owners, commentators, and more. Please like and subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our broadcasts. If you are a league owner and you have a broadcasting need, please visit us at virtualgrip.net for info on how to get in touch with us. Welcome again to the show. I am John Hine. I am here with director, producer, Ryan Seneker, and we thank you for tuning in. Today's guest is a voice of the VGM Broadcasting Network and a bootleg racing league member, Ricky Harden. But before we get to our interview, let's go to Ricky with this week's recap. Saturday, September 21st, marked the Bootleg Racing League's 30th anniversary with the 9th annual Skitter Creek Shootout at Southern National Motorsport Park. The 125-lap showdown featured past BRL champions battling it out in the ARCA stock cars, a change from the usual SK Modifieds and late model stock cars. Jason Menda secured the pole with Matt Hoos alongside. At the green flag, Menda jumped to the lead while Hoos held off pressure from Ruben Altiz. The ARCA cars tested the field with loose handling, leading to multiple incidents. One of those incidents included Matt Hoos, who went in the spin cycle on lap 20, though he would continue on at the back of the 20-car field. After the race got back going, Menda assumed control of the field while Hoos sliced his way through the competition to get back into contention. The race appeared to be firmly in Menda's control as the laps wound down, but... On lap 112, the night took a dramatic turn. In a chaotic sequence down the backstretch, Mike Holloway and Todd Liston collided, triggering a multi-car pileup that collected several top contenders. Hoos, avoiding the melee, moved up to the second position as the field regrouped for the restart. When that green flag went flying, Hoos powered past Menda on the outside. And as Menda spun his tires, Hoos cruised to victory, winning the ninth annual Skitter Creek Shootout. Thank you, Ricky. Now we'll be right back with our conversation with him right after this quick timeout. Welcome back, and I am joined by Ricky Harden, this week's guest. His first race was with us in BRL was in 2015, and he took a little hiatus, and he came back in January of 2024. He has made 31 starts. He's had two wins, both coming in the super late models at the Bullring in Las Vegas and Southern National Raceway. He also has 20 top, or, or, yeah, he's got 20 top fives. He is also one of the voices you hear every Saturday night calling the races with soup. And Ricky, how are you th- this week? I'm not doing too bad. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. And yeah. welcome to the show. And thank you. Uh, I guess now I can publicly say, hey, thanks for uh, jumping in for me a couple of weeks back. Yeah, yeah. Hey, no sweat at all. We all have a uh, real life that gets in the way of our hobbies. And uh, it's a lot more important. So I'm uh, happy to do it. 
Yes, and uh, you did an outstanding job. In fact, I think I called Lowell afterwards and was like, hey, do I still have a job? <laughs> so, but uh, I do I do thank you for, for, for jumping in there for me. So, but you know what? Let's start our conversation here. You know, I, I since this is your first time on the show, you know, the, the first thing I usually ask guests, uh, and you're going to be no different here, tell me about your journey, uh, how you found iRacing, and then, then how did you find the BRL? Oh boy. Well, that goes a long way back. I got into racing games as a, at a very young age. My dad worked in IT uh, and I got an old PC running DOS is by the, probably about by the time I could walk, you know, DOS. so uh, yeah, you know it. <laughs> so I got into, you know, racing with Indianapolis 500 by Papyrus and Bill Elliott's NASCAR challenge. I haven't heard too many people mention that one, but those are the two that I played around with when I was a little tyke, probably five or six years old. Um, I forgot the Indy 500. That did run on DOS, and and so did that did. NASCAR. Oh, that first NASCAR one they did too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, NASCAR yeah. Racing, uh, the original one by Papyrus, and I, I originally, you know, played all that stuff just with a keyboard. I was a kid. I was playing around, uh, you know, like I said, and and finally in about 1999. Uh, you know, NASCAR three was on the market. That was the big game. And I finally got into racing online at that time. So that was my first, first jump into racing online. <laughs> you know, there's a bunch of people now, probably a little bit younger than us going, what the hell is DOS? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, you know, okay, you got into I, you got into the sim world of racing back there with a the NASCAR. How did you find I racing? Well, so uh, I'll I'll take you back to NASCAR 2003 by Papyrus because uh, I raced in a league that a lot of people know these days because Dale Jr. ran it. It was called DMP, um, the Dirty Mo Posse, and and we ran. You know, we were. Well, probably the biggest league on NASCAR 2003 and uh, getting connected with those guys uh, kind of allowed me to get a little bit more insight into the inner workings of uh, Papyrus and their shutdown and uh, into iRacing and almost everybody that was in there was a beta tester on iRacing. I had kind of stepped away from sim racing quite as much by that time so uh, I, I didn't do the beta thing um, and, and I went to a friend's house while it was beta and kind of got my first taste of it but I never joined until late 2009 so that's about a year after iRacing got going. I think that's the year that I uh, that got in there well now you're into iRacing so did you find BRL right away or did you do uh, wh what were you doing when you first got in there? Yeah, so I, I found BRL in 2015. I've been doing a lot of other things in between, uh, you know, uh, getting on iRacing. And then they didn't have leagues right away on iRacing. So you had to, you know, kind of organize strength of fields. You would try to get into a race together. Everybody would get in there and do things. And then they finally came out with the hosted thing. And then they came out with the league thing. And uh, so that made it a whole lot easier to organize things. But uh, finally, when 2015 came around, I got into I, I, I don't remember how I discovered BRL, to be quite honest with you. Um, and I only ran a couple of races. Um, and it was it was I, I think I got wrecked uh, a couple of times. And I was like, man, I was going to win those. And then I just you know, went on and did something else. <laughs> well, we're, we're glad you came back. And uh, me too. You know, somewhere in there, though, you, you started broadcasting these things. Tell me, how did that come about? Okay, well, that's also going to take us way back in the day. There okay. was a platform Step back, uh, back in the way back machine. Yeah, exactly. There was a platform back on in the NASCAR 2002 NASCAR 2003 by Papyrus days. Um, that was called online racing TV. And I got into broadcasting there originally. There was a series called the Race Cake series that was only a Daytona Talladega thing. And I uh, stepped in and, and Race Cakes was the sponsor and they gave away these big race car shaped cakes to people when they won. It was pretty cool. Uh, but I stepped in and oh, broadcasted man. some of those. And, yeah, no, I want those back. Whoever was doing yeah. those, we need them back. Well, I think Lowell should be uh, sending that out every week for <laughs> winners or something, you know, send a cake to somebody. Yeah. Yeah, so I got hooked I like up that. with Scott Fairman. Scott Fairman is, is a name that people would know if they were into sim broadcasting back in those 2002 to 2006 era. He ran a company called Sim Racing Network and uh, SRN TV, and they broadcasted a lot of really big things. So I helped him with artwork. I stepped in to do uh, some of the production with him and doing some commentary work on a few of the series. So that's that's kind of how I got into it. And then uh, took a little bit break 
break away when I got married and had kids, and then I'm then I came back. <laughs> well, when you came back, did you come back driving, or did you uh, kind of ease back into it uh, from a commentary standpoint? I ne I never stopped driving. <laughs> oh, okay. I cut back on I cut back on the driving for sure because you know you have to when you have really little ones. Uh, but yes. I definitely. Uh, I, I had to cut something out. And so I cut a lot of the production and commentary and that kind of thing out. So I, I missed it. I really wanted to come back into it. And, and the, how I got hooked up in BRL was I reached out to one of your former guests here, and that is um, um, Sean Ambrose. And Sean Ambrose used to call some of the races when I was in the Lionheart series yeah. here on iRacing. And uh, he was like, yeah, I'll hook you up with Lowell and Ryan. And uh, it, it turned out to be a really cool thing. I, I'm really enjoying it. Well, since you, you've come back now and uh, working with uh, VGN and uh, working with Soup, <laughs> um, I've had the pleasure of working with Soup. Uh, I've got to ask, uh, how many times did you have to get it together uh, when he uh, when he does one of his soupisms? Um, I still I still struggle with that man because he'll go off on something, and I'm like, I can't follow this up. I have to like, hold on, I got to collect my thoughts because what did you just say? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's all. And you know what, though, that makes the broadcast, and that and that's why soups loved. I mean, you know what, people watching it, they they get entertained by that. And uh, you know, we got cameras on right now. I can't imagine having Saturday night if they had cameras on us. <laughs> when uh, I think some of the things that they would people would see would be uh, priceless. I think at times, anyway. Um, well, you've been doing the the broadcasting and the driving now here. Uh, you know, with VGN slash BRL. Um, which one do you have a more fun at? Are you loving them both? Oh, I love them both. Uh, this is a good group of guys to race around in BRL. And I, you know, I used to, I used to be super competitive. I had to go out and I had to compete for the win. And, uh, you know, I've had a mindset shift over the last few years and maybe it's part of getting older and getting a little slower <laughs> with this, uh, where I just go out to have some fun. And, uh, this is a good group of guys to race with when, when you're looking for that, because it's camaraderie, it's respect. Um, and, and you don't feel like you have to go out there blazing, <laughs> trying to, trying to whoop everybody. No, you, you don't. And, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. It's probably one of the best, if not the best group of guys, uh, to, to be in a league with and everything else. But, uh, you know, you know, we did the, the champion shootout last week, uh, just real quick. How did your shootout? Was that your first time doing that? Yeah, it was. And uh, it was, I, I was originally going to be on the mic and I was like, well, Shaggy said he wanted to do it. So maybe I'll jump into the race. And so I did. And uh, it went well for about the first 75%. <laughs> and then uh, I got, got uh, collected in a couple of incidents. So just sometimes there's just no way to miss them, you know? <laughs> well, I, I know that you, uh, you really like that modified um so is there another car uh i mean we drove the arc and that shootout saturday and well, you guys drove that arca car in this on uh, saturday is there another car when you're not racing in brl is there another car that you really like to run or, or series or, or whatever well yeah for sure my favorite car is the 87 cup cars i love them really i, I think they're fantastic and i, I love driving you're, those you're I, can. What? <laughs> <laughs> I you know there, there's a couple other cars i like like the lotus 49 that thing is oh. fun and if you've ever yes. driven it on an oval, on big ovals, yes. freaking yes. awesome, dude. I, I, um, I took it to Indy, and it was mm. eye-opening Yeah, on how to do that, because you can't hold that wide open there. No, you, you can't hold it wide open anywhere. <laughs> it's well, great. that's true. That's true. <laughs> that Lotus is, uh, I forgot, it's been a while since I've hopped in there, but I've yeah. taken laps in it. That's a fun, hard car to drive, though. Yep, yep. A any For others? Sure. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't, I don't love the modified to be quite honest with you. It's not oh, one of my well, favorites. Well, I, I know I, before we, you had a choice though, to either call the late model or run the modified. Well, I thought you chose the modified, or did it, was so, that just no, your, I, your favorite of the two? Well, I know I can be more consistent with being here for the late model race. So I wanted to choose that to oh, broadcast. Uh, okay. my, the way I get, you know, I'm out with the kids and out with the wife a lot on Saturday. So sometimes it's really hard to to get on here in time for that modified race. And, uh, and Friday nights were always difficult back when we ran them on Friday nights. So I just, I, I said, let's commit to being here for the late models and that way I'll be on the mic. And then if I can race, I'll have the time I'll, I'll be here for the modifieds. Gotcha. Gotcha. I thought you chose them cause I, you kind of like that car though. So <laughs> no, you, you run really well. You run every you, week. 
<laughs> yeah, I say you run really well on them. So for a car you don't like, uh, not not get, seem to get pretty good results out of it. Scary yeah, what you what you might do in that uh, that forty nine Lotus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually lo- love the late model stock as well. If I if I had a chance to race it, I would. But I love being on the mic uh, and watching those guys racing. And I I really think that that car is is intriguing to watch. Um, yeah. you know, because there's a lot going on. You have to really manage tires. You really have to, to be strategic about the way you race those cars. And, and it's fun to call it. Yeah. And, and I, I would think that's actually probably the more difficult of the two to call. Actually. I mean, I've called them both yeah. and you know, with the modified, you know, you don't have, like you said, that tire, you, you don't have that tire fall off. So people are you know just going whereas i modified some guys you'll see some guys drop back and then they'll you've got so many comers and goers trying to keep track of keep track is okay are they falling back out of strategy are they just off the pace and then all of a sudden here they come back um so yeah i I would think that's probably a lot more difficult to to call that but probably a lot more fun because of that yep yep i like keeping track of all that Who, who are the comers who are the goers and what's going on so i love that well, outside of iRacing, uh, do you have any c- other kind of racing background? I, I got to assume that you kind of uh, started doing like Indy 500 and all that because you- you- you've enjoyed, you know, motorsports. Um, oh, yeah. So, uh, so what do you follow then, uh, in, 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 motorsports wise? Well, real so world, my dad, anyway. yeah, my dad got me into racing because so back in the late 80s, when I'm a little tyke, uh, my dad was huge into NASCAR, and so mm-hmm. he decided he wanted j- to jump behind the wheel uh, and race at the local short track, which is Greenville Pickens Speedway. Oh. Uh, so I dragged my sister. Uh, yeah, so he dragged my sister and I to the racetrack every Saturday night and every Friday night at Anderson Motor Speedway, which is right down the road from there. So uh, we would do both. We would do Fridays and Saturdays, and I became a super fan. I just I learned all of the nuances and you know all of the drivers and the history and everything, and I just soaked all of that in. I loved it. So uh, I can't imagine being out there on a Saturday night and seeing yeah. the people that have come through there. That oh, yeah. you know their their trajectory. You know the sky was the limit. Oh yeah. Um. Well, it was there a when you were going out there? What did what kind of car did your dad drive? He drove what was called a Charger, which is kind of like a street stock uh, these days. They, they call them Renegades now when they're racing at Anderson. Uh, Greenville Pickens is unfortunately closed down. They've been shut down now for two years. Yeah. Uh, it's still for sale. So if there's anybody that's a multimillionaire just looking to revive a racetrack, please <laughs> don't let it turn wow. into distribution center space. Well, uh, iRacing has one in Dale Jr. I mean, if Tony can make a racetrack oh, yeah. work, I think Dale could too. So <laughs> Believe me, I talked to Dale Jr. about it, actually, and uh, he's just not interested in running a, 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 a short track. But uh or or that one in particular may not be the finances that would work for him but uh yeah i i just wish something would happen to save it it's 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 my life man it's it's where i grew up well you said you started really getting into the nuance and and stuff so was there uh you know you you had your dad's car which i'm sure you paid attention to and that was you're probably your dad's you know biggest fan but how about some of the touring because you know there's a lot of history that come in there a lot of big touring series and all that so did you was there one that kind of grabbed you and you gravitated to her because yeah i mean you guys got what modified there i mean bush grand national you talk back in the 80s bush grand national went there yeah not not when i was by the time i was coming up i was born mid 80s so they were already out of there by then and they were still doing like hickory and some of the other uh, south boston some of those tracks but they weren't coming to greenville pickens um the main series that came through there was the all pro series which turned into the the k and n uh series and now it's arca east so i obviously watched that and then the later years cars tour and i actually i worked with cars tour so i worked a lot of those events doing you know camera work so uh that was those those are the main series i always followed coming through and you say the all pro man that you talk about an evolution of a car because those used to be late models is what those were yeah, they yeah, were they were super late models at a time. Yeah, so yeah. The, which are the straight, you know, the straight rail, you know, left yes. center. <laughs> yeah, I had a friend of mine that actually Chuck Knight went out and ran a handful of those races. So um, I remember looking at that car, being at their shop, looking at those cars. Those were much different than what those K and N East cars are now. Totally different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um that was it was cool and i i followed all of the touring series that came through there but those are the main ones i remember 
Um, you know, well, obviously, you know, you had uh, the Earnharts that, uh, you know, made a lot of starts there, not only Dale, but, you know, Kelly and, and the rest of them. But, you know, any other interactions you had with uh, any of those up and comers coming through there? Yeah, I had a, a fun story. So, you know, I told you I raced in, in Dale Jr.'s league in, mm -hmm. from 2003 to 2007 ish. Uh, that's when uh, the DMP was going on. And one of the racers that was in that series with me it went by the name of Denny Hamlin. And uh, so we got to know each other a little bit online and he came to Greenville Pickens to make his first start. And Joe Gibbs was there scouting him. Uh, he was racing the 99 late model. And uh, so I talked to him and I said, here's what guys do when they, when they take the line down in here to turn one, you're getting, I walked the track with him and I said, you're going to get down here into the entry of turn one, right against this inside wall, turn three and four, pretty straightforward. The wall follows you all around the inside. And, and he, he was like, all right, cool. This, thanks. He'd never seen the place. He went out there 10 minutes later and set the track record. <laughs> he ran oh, the wow. fastest lap anybody's ever seen. And that stood until Joey Logano came to the track a few years later. So uh, pretty impressive. Uh, it was it was cool being able to talk to him back in those days. I haven't really talked to him since he went to Cup. But uh, that was a, uh, an interaction that was pretty special. Yeah, I mean, that, that does sound like something that uh, you'll carry with you. Uh, and that's that's really cool, because like I said, that history there is, is mind-boggling. Oh, yeah. I mean, you go back to the early days of NASCAR, and I mean, that was one of the the, the big-time tracks that uh, sure. stock car racing, you know, got put on the map with. So, um, well, you know, let's kind of move away from, uh, we've talked a little bit about racing, I racing, all that, but, uh, I know you've got to have some other hobbies. I've seen pictures of an RV and things like that, oh, yeah. you know, like camping. So tell us, uh, when you're, when you're away and you've got the family and what are the things that you guys like to do? Yeah. My in-laws have an RV, so they, oh, okay. Love, that's why I saw they, the RV. And, and they got it for our kids. <laughs> Honestly. I mean, they love to travel and have our kids with them. So, uh, you know, any, anything they can do for the grandkids. Right. So, uh, we travel quite a bit. Doesn't, that, doesn't that make you mad? I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. how many times have you been sitting there and you watch your, your parents deal with your kids and you're like, who right? the hell are you? Yeah. <laughs> where, where my where mom and this? dad go? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure where, I where was this 25 one. years ago. What happened? <laughs> yeah. I've seen things where my mom, I would have woke up from a coma a week later, but my mom with my kids, oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> really? So, yeah. Good. So, that's so good to traveling, know. traveling is something we love to do with them and, uh, and, you know, taking the kids to various places. It's, Whenever we get a chance, that's one of our big things. So uh, we, my wife and I actually traveled without the kids this year for, for really the first time uh, oh, wow. and went to Montana and spent oh. a few days in Montana over the summer for our 50th anniversary. Oh, so, you should have met up with Trey last <laughs> week. Know. We were talking yeah, about I that. Heard. He's oh. not. He's not from Canada. He, he lives in Montana. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, soup. If you missed it last week, uh, there it is again. <laughs> Trey, he talked about it. He talked about it on the race. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. Um, so where did you guys go in Montana? Uh, so we flew into Bozeman and we stayed okay. kind of, uh, we stayed east of Bozeman about an hour and just some on somebody's ranch. You know, there's a lot of Airbnbs out there on people's yes. ranches. And, and this one was way off the beaten path, which is exactly what we were looking for, you know. Uh, so it was cool. We, we drove around. We went all the way up to Helena one day, uh, explored up there, did the, uh, the, um, gates what is that tour called on the on the river up there i can't remember exactly but it's where the it's where the mountains look like a gate opening up it's it's a lewis and clark oh, thing oh, that'd be uh, awesome from, from one of their expeditions and that that was pretty cool uh we went to yellowstone that was incredible so uh i love to travel it's great did you get a picnic basket stolen Boy, <laughs> no, no picnic yellowstone. No. That's, yellowstone. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so what what was your favorite part of that trip? Uh, being out there secluded, you know, because I can only imagine that would just be, being out of ranch, you know, I can see the night and everything. What a cool thing that would be. Or did you like going into Yellowstone? What was your favorite part? Honestly, the trip into Yellowstone, we decided to go uh, into the northeast entrance. Um, and to do that, you have to go on a road called the Beartooth Scenic Highway. And the Beartooth Scenic Highway, I, it, it is a must see if you've never been out to that area. It's beautiful. Uh, the views going up this mountain and going across this pass, it's only open probably four or five months out of the year, Max, because because of so much snow. We saw a lot of snow. This was this was July when we were there. And we saw July? a lot of snow up. Yeah, we saw a lot of snow on the top of that mountain pass. So 
uh, I can only imagine it, it's not, not passable by car uh, for the majority of the year. <laughs> well, outside of the, the traveling and, and all that kind of stuff, uh, anything else? I mean, do you golf or fish or anything? I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to I used to golf and fish a little bit. I fished with my grandpa back when he was with us, and uh, I loved doing that. Uh, golfing is something I used to do with friends before I had kids. Maybe you know now that my my kids are nine and six, so as they get a little older, I think I get a little bit more free time each day. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I'll pick up golf again. More, they get a little more self sufficient. Right. That's, right. On one hand, that's a blessing. But yeah, on the other hand, worse. but on yeah, because their interests get more expensive. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what they want for birthday or Christmas. That's yeah. That's a painful trade off. Oh I, yeah. I have found. Uh, um, well, cool. Uh, anything else that you, 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 you kind of like to do or anything that uh, fascinates you? I mean, well, obviously or anything. Yeah, obviously uh, history. I love history. I could talk about that. Um, but I, I love, I love, uh, it, I love computers. Uh, I built my first computer when I was a kid and I've, you know, done it since. Uh, so, you know, Very cool. coming up, coming up into iRacing, when I first got into that, a lot of people would come to me and ask them to ask me to build them a computer to get, to get on. And so I probably built, I don't know, 20 or 30 computers for other iRacers. And then I was like, oh, wow. uh, then I had kids. So, you know, I had to cut back on that hobby, but, uh, I work in the IT industry. So that's something that I've been doing for a little over uh, probably about 20 years now. Uh, well, I've got to ask, because you said you love history, and now this is where hopefully people don't tune out, but I'm going to ask, what, what, what is your favorite time period then, h historical time period that you, you like to kind of read into or fascinate you the most? Because I'm a, probably, just for the record, I'm a history nerd too. So Yeah, probably like, you know, the revolutionary period of, of, mm. of the American uh, time frame. I like the, the early beginning of the U.S. Uh, it's, it's, that's cool. I mean, I you could look back to, you know, you know, Roman times and, and that kind of thing. There's a lot of really cool things there as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, funny thing is, early. I'm actually, I'm actually reading a book. John Meacham wrote about Thomas Jefferson through that point oh, that's and awesome. leading up to, Oh, excellent book. I recommend it. And then 1776 is another one that I read that I thought was just fantastic. So look yeah. at those two titles if you do like to read, but cool. yeah, you know, that's the one thing is, um, cause I guess, you know, we'll kind of move into where you kind of live and work, but you live in South Carolina, correct? Yep. Yep. Yeah, so I you want to talk about the revolutionary period. We've yeah, got the battle battle Calpins, and that's very Calpins close there. <laughs> oh, so you're 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 near Spartanburg. Yes, I'm in Greenville. So uh, Greenville and Spartanburg yeah. are really close to each other. Right? Yes, yeah, just down the highway, uh, mm -hmm. not very far at all. Yeah, uh, I I've actually been to, uh, there to Calpins and, and seen great. that and, and all that kind yeah. of stuff. That's how I come when you said it. I knew right where it was, but. <laughs> um, how many of those Civil War places have you, or Civil War, the, the Revolutionary War, because there's, that's, there's like littered all over through there. Yeah, so that's really the only one I've been to and seen like mm -hmm. a reenactment and all that kind of stuff. And that's, it's really cool, you know, seeing them do that. Uh, I've never, got, so my, my grandpa, I, he passed away in 2018. Um, and he did probably like five years before his death, he, he went on a tour of a lot of these historical sites from you know starting there and kind of going up the east coast so uh i don't i don't know all the ones he went to but i need to i need to get his uh little book of memories and go through it all and see if i can follow it yeah there's a, a civil war map here that you can go and follow mm -hmm. and and somewhere along the lines i'm gonna try to do that um, yeah that era is fascinating too so I, yeah that's yeah, my next is. one well but i'm closer to those if i had revolutionary yep. war i would probably be choose those first but you being on the the east coast there you're you're closer to that history yeah. um if i go out there then my my wife's gonna want to go to the biltmore mansion or you that's know that's a good that's a good visit too it's fun yes, and they open is. different they open different rooms that's about an hour from me i'm pretty close there yes uh yeah. so uh you, you, they yep. open different rooms at different times of the year and different years, so you get to see yes. something different every time you go. Yes, yes, we've been there uh, once, um, but okay. we've driven by it a couple, two, three times. So, um, well, you know, we've established now where you're living before uh, people start tuning out because we're geeking out here a little too much, maybe. But uh, <laughs> where do you work and, and what do you do? Well, I'll go back through through the years a little bit. So I started okay. working in schools, um, and that when I got into IT, that was kind of my first thing: deploying uh, computers in schools. And um, I did 
that kind of thing. Uh, I was contracted to fix everything in a school from computers, laptops, Chromebooks, printers, interactive whiteboards, phones, switches, servers, cabling, whatever. Um, and that took me that t- took me out of the Greenville area. I moved to Charlotte um, for a little while. I was actually in Indian land, South Carolina. So just about 10 minutes south of Charlotte in, in South Carolina. Uh, and that, cause that was kind of a centralized area between um, both of the states, South and North Carolina. And I, I serviced customers all the way across both states. So I drove a lot. Um, so when my wife got pregnant with our first son, it was kind of time for a change. We wanted to be closer to our parents. Um, so we, we, I took a job with the uh, local school district here, Greenville, Greenville County. And uh, they're, they're the largest school district in South Carolina. So they got about 105 schools. And I was a network technician with them. And it was pretty much the same thing, just doing it for the school district. But uh, they didn't pay very well. So I was always looking for, for uh, part-time work and other things to do on the side. And uh, this, is, this was a cool point in my career because um, a, a sim racing connection kind of comes in. And I tie it all back to sim racing. Um, I had a friend and teammate that I raced with for several years, and I still do, uh, named Tommy Ryan. And uh, we, we raced in DMP together and uh, I didn't plan it. But when I moved to Indian land, uh, it turned out I, I moved half a mile from him. <laughs> wow. Had no idea. So we were neighbors and we used to, you know, we grew close and went to like cookouts and family functions and stuff together. And uh, he had younger kids at the time. And my wife and I didn't have any kids or friends, <laughs> you know, moving there. So it was uh, it was really a, a great time for us to, to get close with somebody there. But um one of, the, one of the things I did was I got a part-time job working for a company called Northern Tool. Um, and that's where Tommy worked full-time at their distribution center. And he's actually known um, in iRacing for driving his Northern Tool paint scheme. Uh, and he, uh, he got the opportunity to, to design the, the scheme that Roush used when they entered NASCAR. Um, so that was his paint scheme. And he, he drove it online before, you know, they drove it on the real track. So that was pretty cool. Oh, wow. <laughs> So, you know, as I, as I moved back away from him, back to the upstate here in South Carolina, that's what we call this area of South Carolina, um, I, I, uh, there was a job opening at the distribution center where he worked in IT. So I actually ended up going back there to work. <laughs> and it was, you know, a two-hour drive from where I lived. So that was not ideal. Um, but, you know, the pay was right. <laughs> but, uh, it was a great job. I really miss it. Miss it. I learned a lot. And uh, IT is one of those things you just never, ever stop learning. It's, uh, it's a great field if, you're, if your mind is curious and you, you just you can't stop getting new information. <laughs> you know, it's, it's good for that. But uh, I did that for a few years and then um, moved, uh, decided it was just not good for my family. It wasn't good for, for the commute <laughs> two hours yeah. each way. Poof, it was rough. I got in a bad, you know, mental state. Uh, it strained on my relationship with my wife. It was it was really a really bad time in my life, honestly. At the end yeah. of that, and um, well, it that's was a, a dream lot of, of extra time. That's a lot of extra time. Uh, no, it is. It it's almost another job just driving. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, so it was. It's always been a. It was. Yeah. Sorry. It had always been a dream of mine to uh, to work for Michelin, and they're headquartered here uh, in the upstate of South Carolina. Really. Uh, well, they're they're. American headquarters is here. They're actually based out of France. I didn't know um, that. Yeah, so they're headquartered here. Um, and my father-in-law worked there. My dad worked there. So there's family connection. And uh, a temp agency job came open that happened to be positioned there. So I got my foot in the door. That's when I left Northern. And I've been working at Michelin ever since. That was in 2022. Uh, and I quickly got out of the temp position and got into a full-time spot. And uh Man, it's it's my dream working for them. They're a, a wonderful company. They make the best tire that's on the road, um, and they do a lot of other things in in technology and around tires and beyond tires. They're they're a, a huge player, so it's it's great working for them. Oh, when so you when you, you can actually say living the dream there, and it's not yeah, a am. sarcastic. Am. Uh, <laughs> well, very cool. Well, I gotta assume, okay, IT related, but then what exactly do you do for them when you when you yeah. while you work? 
So I'm a network, uh, I work in the networking department. So I'm a network SME. Um, I mostly do like designs for um, new sites or for additions at sites, uh, adding, you know, switching or whatever other equipment they need to add in firewalls, that kind of thing. Um, and we'll design it, we'll, uh, we'll fix issues that they're having, the, the operational aspects of things. And uh, so it's, there's a lot of other aspects of it, but that's the primary gist of, of what I do. So can I uh, get you to, to, you got like an inside source that could get me some really cool tickets for the 24-hour Daytona or Le Mans? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we do get a discount. Oh, don't tell me <laughs> well. I'll be calling you every day of the week, man. <laughs> Where yeah, hell, I, so I, I went to the uh, 24-hour Daytona a few times back in mm -hmm. uh, 10 years ago or so. That's one of the, that was like our big outing that my race team did uh, mm -hmm. when, we, when we had a big sim racing team and a lot of us got together. We always met each other there. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. We camp in the infield. So uh, I'd love to go oh, back. Fun. It's been a long time. Um, and a matter of fact, I think next year I may get that chance because I trained this year to join Michelin's tire specialist program. They send a tire specialist with each IMSA team um, to all of the IMSA races. Uh, and they use volunteer Michelin employees to do it. So I'll be working as a, a tire specialist with IMSA teams next year at a few races when I, when I, when I have time. <laughs> Well, hopefully IMSA gives everybody back their cars. I think I read earlier today that they impounded like, the whole field at Indianapolis <laughs> for, I don't know what it was for, but I mean, literally the Boy. whole field got impounded, um, which that's not good. Um, but how cool is that? You could be able to go down there and, and you, your team and you guys camped in there. So I got to ask, did you get any sleep or did you guys, you know, have some fun and, and enjoy the bit. whole 24 hours? So yeah, you actually we, we tried. We tried to get some sleep during the race. It was tough. <laughs> I'll tell you I that. imagine so. Uh, it's, it's not as loud as going to a NASCAR race there, but it's still loud. Uh, and I, actually, really, the, all the you got sixty some my cars. Yeah. The NASCAR was still. You think it was louder? The NASCAR cars are just so much louder in wow. general. Yeah. It, so when you're uh, where you camp, it's in the middle of like NASCAR turn and turns three and four. Mm -hmm. um, and the, so the infield road course is so far away from you. You don't really hear any of that. You hear them coming around the oval. Gotcha. Um, so it's just <laughs> all night long. But Oh, so you uh, get kind of, a, kind of, kind of like white. And, yeah, as I say, like, you know, a little white noise in the background there. Yeah, but I'll tell you, one year, uh, 2014 maybe, they were building the new grandstands that they built at Daytona. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the middle of the night during the 24-hour race, the fire alarm was going off in it. I don't know oh. who set off the fire alarm, but it was going off for like four hours straight. I did oh. not sleep during that. <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle of the night. <laughs> Nor you or anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is really, really cool. Uh, I'm, I'm jealous. Uh, I, I've gone to the 24 once, um, and uh, that's one of those I always recommend when people say something cool on here. Oh, yeah. If you're a racing fan, even if you're not a road racing fan, yeah, get down there because it's a motor sport happening i mean it's an event it's a, it's a huge event yeah. there is so much to do in the end yes. field it's it's not like attending just a normal race it's so no. different and it's an experience that i think anybody could enjoy no and and to top it all off i mean if you're into cars they've got car shows going yeah. on i mean it's yeah it it is it, it's like candy land if, you, if you're a racing racing fan it's like going to disneyland basically 100%. overnight so <laughs> that's one that i would uh if, if you're a racing fan you, you really should get to get to go down there yeah. oh and by the way it's daytona so it's you know it's a mecca anyway um well you know you've got a really cool job and some cool connections so uh if you do are able to get that trip to le mans now that's a bucket list for me i oh, can, me too <laughs> I, I can fold up in a suitcase just fine i don't even care if i'm not check <laughs> luggage throw my butt in the bottom of that plane and uh with an oxygen tank and i'll make do <laughs> um oh, so uh, i'd love to get there too man i'm i'm, I'm hoping one year yeah well it, you know not even for the track but france uh, i've been over there a couple times and in, in that that region you know the mm -hmm. the wines and all that kind of stuff and i do want to get to the bordeaux region um that's the one region i haven't which isn't really near that but still it's in france yeah. um and all that kind of stuff but uh well that's really cool man uh very very cool to, to kind of learn about you a little bit and you know i 
I, one of the reasons why we started the show is to, so everybody can get to know each other a little bit. And I do want to plug you a little bit because I know that you you have your own YouTube channel and you have your own merchandise website, right? Yep, I sure do. Yeah. Well, tell us about that. So YouTube and Twitch. I stream a lot of races live on Twitch uh, at Heart on the Wall. That's the shirt I'm wearing. Look at that. Uh, and I sell a lot of. That's merchants. clever. <laughs> it is right. Got my name. It's like those in there. interviews you see on t- TV where they've got their right? books they've written behind them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, not, not only that, but uh, I have a, a sim racing merch site called simracingmerch.com. Go figure. Uh, and I, I created a lot of uh, designs on there, and had a couple of friends that helped me also create some additional designs. So if you're interested in having a, a T-shirt that that uh, you know shows the hobby that you do, or any other kind of merch, uh, we might have it there. And you can uh, reach out to me if there's anything else that you think I should add. I might do it. So uh, that that's something fun I do. I like to design some shirts every now and then and uh, throw them up there. Maybe we should get VGN shirts or something hey, like that. Maybe we could do it. There you go. Yeah, maybe. Um, well. Very cool, and and, and uh, folks, once again, uh, the where you can go to the merchandise. Give us the the, the website address real quick. Simracingmerch dot com. There you go. Go out there and, and, and check that out, and uh, you know, hopefully, get, grab something there and uh, help Jeff out or <laughs> help Ricky hey, out there. Ron Harden, that's my brother from. Atlanta, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. And uh, you know, a few episodes back, I couldn't get names right, and I don't want to go down that road again because took me a, a few weeks to live that down so uh but uh very cool and, and whatnot well the the last thing that i'm going to do and we do what i call a green white checker it's just like three quick things here so bear I'm with ready. me all right you kind of answered one so the first one's going to be there but if you had to choose broadcasting or driving which one do you do oh man uh i'll and let's say I give you a hundred bucks to do either one. So you're making a hundred bucks no matter what, either way. Which one do you do? Driving. Why? Driving. Still love to drive, man. I, I still love to compete and get some competitive juices flowing. But I'll tell you what, that's tough because I really, since getting back behind the mic, um, it's uncomfortable for me. I push myself. Um, I'm an introvert, <laughs> big time at home, you know. Uh, but I, I, I really love getting behind the mic and calling races too. So it's, right. that's, that's a really you, tough you one. You did a good job here in this seat, you know, too. So uh, <laughs> you did a really nice job there. So just not didn't feel them. that way. It didn't feel that way. But, but you know, the, the more you get experience with doing uncomfortable things, I think the better. Yes. All right. Next one. And this is kind of a, a weekend getaway for you guys or anybody in the East Coast there. But Hilton Head or Myrtle Beach? Oh, Hilton Head. Myrtle Beach sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I, wow. am not a, I am not a fan of Myrtle Beach. And I, I say that as somebody that growing up, that's where we went. Um, All right. How about this? Hilton Head or Emerald Isle? Ooh. Uh, well, so I've only been to Emerald Isle once. Um, I like Hilton Head. My sister lives there. So I, uh, we, go, we go there a lot. Uh, and uh, I've got, grown fond of all the places that are nearby. So I enjoy that. Of course, when I typed that, I forgot that Myrtle Beach Speedway is no longer there. So that was it part is of no, the draw. But Florence isn't but, very far from that location, no. Florence Motor Speedway. No, but Emerald Isle, I've been there once, and I absolutely loved it was nice, uh, Emerald yeah. Isle. Expensive, but, but fun. <laughs> Oh, um, mine. Right, last one. Too. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> I guess you're, you're kind of splitting hairs there with that, aren't you? All right, last one. Clemson or South Carolina Gamecocks? Oh, God, Clemson. Clemson all the way, man. I'm a huge Tigers fan my whole life. Are you a bandwagon uh, fan, or, you, or no. can you go back to the, the Schnellenberger? Oh, no. or, yeah, not Schnellen, no. or was it Schnellenberger so, back in the early 80s at <laughs> the championship? Well, I wasn't alive then. Come on. Now. All that. <laughs> I'm young. You got to remember. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I keep yeah. forgetting that I'm an old Gr- fart growing up, and Growing up in Greenville, you know, yeah, there it's – half and half up here, but we are a lot closer to Clemson than we are to South Carolina. Um, so I grew up actually uh, living across the street from the campus of Furman University. So I really, first and foremost, am a Furman fan. Uh, I like to follow Furman sports, but you know, when we talk about the top level, Clemson's my team. Yeah, but Furman is uh, 
generated some excitement in uh, the the NCA tournaments, basketball oh, yeah. tournaments. Oh, especially um, last year. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say. Well, didn't they do a couple of years ago too? Do the same thing. They they had a little run. I thought. I don't know. Maybe I it's think, five or they six made years made, ago. Uh, I think they made got it the second the round a couple of years. Ago. I thought they, they, they got it. all the way to the sixteen a few years no, ago, was, but maybe not. I don't remember now, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least last year, it was it was incredible to watch. Very, very cool. Well, I thank you uh, very much for uh, kind of playing along here and uh, in, in meeting with us. And uh, you know what? We're going to have you back and uh, we're going to find some other things to talk about and get to know you a little bit better. But uh, thank you again. And one more time, give us uh, the website. SimRacingMerch.com. Come on. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And and now I guess we're going to shift gears, Ricky, and, and start talking about uh, what's coming up here on VGN this week. And uh, we're going to kick off a season. Uh, we're going to go to North Wilkesboro. And uh, give me your initial thoughts going there, because that's a unique track going uphill on one straightaway, it downhill is. on another, and two vastly different corners. Yeah, I've, I've not gotten a very good handle on that track since it came out on iRacing, but I think it's a lot of fun. It's just I'm not that good at it, but I'm looking forward to calling the late model race. I don't know if I'm going to make it in time for the SD race or not, but uh, I hope so because uh, it'll be fun to see if we can mix it up. Well, you've got a, how many races you got you got there? You've got a couple, two, three in there, don't you? I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, you talk about getting a handle on it. Let's start with that then. You know, what about it do you find so difficult? Because I know what probably what you find it to be a little difficult. I bet you a lot of people do, actually. Yeah, I, I think it's just hard to be consistent there. And that's something I struggle with no matter what the track is. But in turns three and four, you've got a curb down on the inside. And you really need to, you really got to hit the apex at the right time to, to be right past the end of that curb and get the thing to turn. And if you do that too much, you're going to be spinning off a of turn four. Turn one and two, I find a little bit easier because you can run a little higher. People can take a lot of different entries to turn, to turn one. Uh, and that's fun to watch for sure if it's on a good show because some people dive it down into the bottom of one and other people will take a wide arc. So uh, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for me, the difficulty, like you mentioned, you know, the, getting through three and four and not getting loose off that corner, but then overcoming out of turn two because of the, the radius and everything being it different. Funnels. Like you said. It funnels, <laughs> but your car pushes. So mm -hmm. one corner you're loose, one corner you're pushing. Yeah. And uh, like you said, though, that makes for some really interesting racing. And, and folks can look forward to this, too, because you can run side by side especially down in one and two i think three and four i think it's going to be temperature dependent mostly um but one and two guys can get aggressive with each other down there in that corner to, to make passes so yeah and I, I really i honestly think that top lane is preferred in one and two most of the time depending on weather obviously but yeah, well, I think you're right, especially once you start going and you get into a rhythm, it's easier to run a little bit higher in that corner uh, and maintain your rhythm and, you know, maintain the RPMs and, and get a good run, you know, going down that backstretch there. So what a fun track to go to. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you on the call with Soup Saturday night in the late models. Before that will be the SK Modifieds. Uh, the times are on your screen. And uh, Ricky... Once again, I want to thank you for, for uh, joining us here, and uh, we look forward to hearing you Saturday night. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. And once again, uh, on behalf of uh, Ryan Seneker, my name is John Hine, and we thank you once again for joining us right here on VGN Weekly. We'll see you next week right here. <laughs>